y'all i'm back certainly peace be upon you again i thank you for tuning in again to poem praise too we're going to move right along with the extraordinary african americans next in line i let you know it's going to be richard wright which is a writer uh, during the time period of 1908 to 1960 and this is what i have regarding mr wright the impulse to dream was slowly beaten out of me by experience. Now it surged up again and I hungered for books. New ways of looking and seeing. Richard Wright when Richard Wright was four years old, he accidentally set the house on fire. As his punishment, he was beaten so badly that he lost consciousness. Ooh, that was a, that was a whooping that knocked you out. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And he almost died. Ooh. When he grew older, he suffered not from beatings, but from poverty and hunger. Hoping for a better life, the Wrights moved from Mississippi to Memphis, Tennessee, where Richard was very young. Shortly after they arrived there, Wright's father deserted the family. And after he left, there was never enough to eat. At one point, things were so bad that Wright's mother placed him and his younger brother in an orphanage. Unhappy, he ran away, but was soon caught. Shortly after this incident, his mother took her two boys to live with relatives in Arkansas. The murder of Richard's uncle and his mother's subsequent stroke forced the Wrights to move again. This time, they moved to Jackson, Mississippi to live with Richard's grandmother. The next few years were unhappy ones. Wright could not get along with his grandmother and the family had very little to eat. One encouraging thing about living in Jackson was that Wright was able to attend school regularly. Although his mother taught him to read, he had little formal schooling before the age of 12. His love of reading and vivid imagination inspired him to become a writer. In the segregated society in which he lived, however, such an ambitious goal seemed impossible for a poor African-American child. Discrimination and racial hostility tore at Wright's self-respect. He dreamed of saving enough money to leave Jackson but the manual jobs he managed to get did little more than provide him with food money. One day, in desperation, he stole a gun and some fruit preserves. With the money he made from selling them, he bought a ticket to Memphis. In Memphis, Wright found work in an optical shop. Borrowing a library card from a friendly white man, he began reading whenever he could. Although he had gone no farther than the ninth grade, he soon became familiar with the writings of many of America's finest authors. Now, about 1927, 
Wright moved to Chicago, hoping to find greater freedom and opportunity. He worked as a dishwasher, porter, postal clerk, and insurance salesman. But when the Depression crippled the U.S. economy in the 1930s, Wright, like thousands of others, found himself unemployed. Frustrated and miserable, he joined the Communist Party, which promised racial justice. In 1944, he quit the party. Believing that the communists were using African Americans more than they were helping them. Wright's dream of becoming a writer began to come true after he moved to New York City in 1937. Within a year, a collection of his stories, Uncle Tom's Children, were published. These stories reflected the predestined, excuse me on that word, these stories reflect the prejudice and discrimination Wright experienced while growing up in the South. Two years later, with the support of a Guggenheim Fellowship, his most famous novel, Native Son, was published. It sold 200,000 copies in fewer than three weeks and established right as one of the country's leading authors. Unlike his earlier work, which portrays the rural South, Native Son explores racism and oppression in the North as it affects a young African-American man named Bigger Thomas. Following the success of Native Son, Wright completed a folk history called 12 million black voices. In 1945, he finished Black Boy, the story of his childhood and youth. Even more popular than Native Son, this book reveals the terrible poverty and racism that stunned the lives of most Southern African American children at that time. Now following his move to Paris in 1946, Wright became the leader of a group of writers, artists, and other intellectuals. He wrote The Outsiders in 1953 and The Long Dream in 1958. In 1961, Eight Men was published a book that includes his famous story, The Man Who Lived Underground. His second autobiography, American Hunger, was published in 1977 after his death. Wright is considered one of the finest authors this country has ever produced. His insights into American society shocked the public and exposed the terrible effects of racial prejudice. Starved, beaten, and rejected as a child and forced to face unrelenting racial prejudice and discrimination as an adult, Wright made his way north and then overseas. He persevered, he said, full of a hazy notion that life could be lived with dignity, that the personalities of others should not be violated, that men should be able to confront other men without fear or shame, and that if men were lucky in living on earth, they might win some redeeming meaning for their having struggled and suffered here beneath the stars. Hmm. Yeah, I'll let you just marinate on that. Let that just sink in. 
down here on earth up up under up under the stars y'all hmm. well that does bring Richard Wright and what I have on him as being one of our extraordinary African Americans uh, to an end uh, of what I have on him. I am going to give you a preview of who's coming up next. It's going to be Julian Francis Abele or Abele, A B E L E. And the next is going to be Paul Revere. Williams. Now, Julian, he was during the time period of 1881 to 1950. And Paul Williams is during the time period of 1894 to 1980. And both of them are architects. So certainly stay tuned for those two. And I want you to be blessed until we speak again, okay? All right. And from Paul and Praise too. pretty soon I'll be hollering at you, all right? Okay, just trying to just keep it a hundred, y'all. That's all.